The frugal young delicatessen operator in Berwick, Pennsylvania was in a quandary one day in 1921. He had an oversupply of potatoes and worried they would spoil if not consumed soon. He decided to turn the spuds into potato chips, which, after some experimentation, he created on the coal stove in his mother's kitchen. Then Earl Wise Sr. sold them in brown paper bags and cans in the Wise Delicatessen Company on Front Street to what turned out to be an overwhelming response from customers of the deli and other local operations. After originally delivering the chips on a bicycle with front and rear baskets, Earl Wise acquired his first delivery truck in 1922. Demand soon outstripped capacity in Mom Wise's kitchen, and in 1925, the operation was moved to a remodeled garage in Berwick. Starting a trend that continued for almost four decades when the company bought its first processing system from a vendor, Wise and local associates designed and built their own fryers and other equipment, all done in relative secrecy. He was assisted in development of the equipment by his father. The result was a potato chip with a different flavor and a darker color, which was different from most of the other chips on the market. Production manager Terry Boyer's father, a 52-year Wise veteran, held the same job. Earl Wise uh, took a lot of pride in uh, having everything here at the facility and taking control of it and making sure other people didn't have the same uh, technology. He actually designed and they built all the fryers in-house here. And the first fryer that was actually bought from a conventional place was in the late 60s. Earl Wise Sr. was never satisfied with the status quo. Ever looking for better potato varieties for his chips, he vigorously supported and assisted in research on potato varieties and growing practices. He continually tried new packaging materials to enhance the freshness of the Wise chips. Working with DuPont, the company, which eventually became Wise Foods, was the first snack company to use cellophane bags. A decision he made early on about distribution proved fortuitous, and that was to create a network of independent distributors. Dick Negus, a longtime snack food industry veteran who spent 21 years with the company in various executive capacities, explains. Earl Wise, when he set up the company, decided he was not going to work at the, or try to make money at the distributor level, that he thought that was more an entrepreneur's type of uh, operation. He took uh, several people from the Berwick area and put them in major cities of the uh, East Coast, Boston, Philadelphia, New Jersey, uh, upstate New York. And these were people he knew and, and trusted, and they built the wise business in those areas. Um, he felt very strongly that the owner operator was the strength of the business and uh, built Wise sales very nicely. It was a key piece of decision making. Wise focused on primarily manufacturing, marketing, and sales, and the distributors took care of the distribution activities. The network of distributors eventually spread from Maine to Florida. The innovative Wise was a master marketer. Early on, he picked an owl logo to represent the company, knowing its reputation of being wise. The company hired an advertising agency to develop customer awareness ads and point of sale materials. Wise Owl roadside signs were posted all over the East Coast to promote business. Wise potato chips. In 1944, the year in which Earl Wise was president of what would become the Snack Food Association, the company suffered a disastrous fire which destroyed its plant. In eight months, production resumed in a makeshift facility. A new plant, triple the size of the fire ravaged plant, was opened in 1946, and the tremendous growth continued. As Bruce Brown, CEO of Fairchester Snacks in New Hyde Park, New York, and a fervent collector of Wise memorabilia explains, Earl Wise would do virtually anything he could to stoke sales. Brown's distributor father, Milton, was trying without much success to sell the 80-store New York City food chain H.C. Bohack, Wise Chips. The reluctant buyer's name was Mike Bishop, who said he didn't think Wise was much of a factor in the New York market. So Dad came up with an idea, called up Earl Wise, and said, Earl, can you do me a favor? And we, we were, he was getting about 10 trailer trucks of Wise products each, each day in his Queens Village location. Can you detour the empty trucks past the Bohack headquarters? 
For two weeks, the empty trailer trucks paraded past Bishop's window. Dad gets a call from Mike and Mike says, Milt, what the heck is going on here? I see all these wise trailers coming through my, uh, past my office. And he says, Mike, that's what we're selling right now in the New York metro area. Milt Brown got the order. Al Greer, whose father George began distributing Wise Chips in 1937, remembers vividly the first time he met Earl Wise in the late 1950s, when a group of driver salesmen and other distributor personnel from the family-owned company went to Berwick for a tour of the Wise plant. After we had the tour, Mr. Wise invited us all up to his home. And we went up there, met his wife. She had a delicious meal prepared for us. and. That really impressed me a lot. I don't think that's the kind of thing that happens these days. Earl Wise Sr. was not only a great businessman, but a caring individual who treated associates like family, was a very generous contributor of his time and resources to community affairs, and was an ardent supporter of the snack food industry. In his own words, printed in the Wise Owl newsletter in 1951, he wrote, How did I do it? Just by plain, ordinary hard work and thinking, nothing else. Success is just adding and grasping opportunities as they present themselves and dumping them into the pocket of accomplishment along with vision. At the time of his death in 1963, Earl Wise operated one of the largest potato chip companies in the world with a wide range of other snack products. A year later, Wise Foods Incorporated was sold to Borden Condensed Milk Company. The main reason that they sold to Borden's in 1964, a year after Earl Wise had passed away, was Earl Wise's son, Earl Wise Jr., actually had MS. At the time, he did not know what he had, what disease, but he knew he, he could not take care of the business, the grueling demands of the business. So when Borden's approached them, the main reason the family sold to Borden's was for the security of the employees here at the plant. After Borden tried to jettison its snack holdings in the late 1990s, Wise Foods eventually was acquired in 2000 by Palladium Equity Partners of New York, which installed Ed Lambert as CEO four years later. After some difficult times, Wise is now in the black and looking to expand its product penetration beyond its traditional eastern marketing area. Today, it has 900 employees and 2,500 roots. Lambert says despite the fact that the founder has been gone for nearly 50 years, the legacy of Earl Wise Sr.'s brand still shines over the company. One of the things that really kept the company going, I mean, the employees and the management team, was the legacy of the brand and the power of that brand. Because truly, the, the foundation of this company is the power of that brand. One of the remarkable things about this company is you have second and third generations working still with the company, not only employees in our plant here at Berwick, but also many of our key distributors. Again, second and third generation from individuals that started the business with Earl Wise on a handshake deal. Lambert says that Wise recently has done some nationwide market tests. It was overwhelming the response we got back from customers who had grown up with a Wise brand on the East Coast and now in different parts of the country. It's part of the legacy of what he's created. I mean, quite truly, the employees and the management team, we feel honored, we feel privileged to work under that legacy. And we work under his image here in our plant. Gone, but not forgotten. The Snack Food Association is honored to induct Earl Wise Sr., one of the industry's true legends, into the coveted circle of honor.